Welcome back Throttle Fam to Throttle Tube. As always, I'm Ryan. Check out the new wrap on my bike. I just uploaded a video of me doing this job. So if you want to see that, go check it out. However, today we are not here for that. Today we are going to go over some riding tips with riding with a passenger. As you can see over here, I have Miss Tube, Mrs. Tube. I don't know, I keep giving her different nicknames. We can roll with it. But she is our passenger today. Damn, this bike looks good. Look at this, man. So clean. Anyway, house rules. First thing you want to do with your potential passenger, you're going to want to talk to your passenger before you even start riding, and you're going to want to go over some basics. So first thing you're going to do, obviously we've already done this because, ta-da, we live together and we do this all the time. So a simple thumbs up, a thumbs down, and if they need to talk to you, maybe just tap you on the back and do your due diligence. Just pull over if you feel like something's up. It's worth pulling over rather than having a mistake or an accident on the side of the road. So that being said, we've gone over the safety things. Let's just hop up on the bike, go for a ride, and I can give you some tips as we go. So let's mount up on the bike, and our passenger is gonna get on using the left peg first and hold onto our shoulder and step over. You'll probably be able to see that on this camera here. So if I politely ask, Miss Tube, hop on. As you can see, she hops on nice, comfortably, and confident. Make sure your passenger is fully aware that they can put weight on the pegs and make sure you are fully stable with both feet before you do so to stop the bike tipping over. Because believe it or not, no matter how small this little lady is, when she puts all of her weight on one side, if you're not ready for it, it will happily tip the bike over. But overall, when you're going slow, you want to have nice smooth inputs for yourself and for your passenger. Because as I said with exaggeration, they're going to feel every little movement you do as much as you feel with them on the back. And of course, beforehand, you might notice you might need to adjust your mirrors because you will sit different with someone on the back. So, as I said a second ago, with your passenger on the back, you're going to want to go over in your little briefing or get them to get used to being comfortable with being on the back of the bike, especially at slow speeds, because any wobbles that they will do or any movement they have will be felt through your bike. As you can tell when I'm getting slow, the bike will happily lean over very quickly. As you can see, this happens when you go very slow. Of course, the faster you get as normal, the more the bike is stable, but I don't suggest you do 200 kilometers or 150 mile an hour just to make sure your passengers stay still. So out on the road here, the first thing you are going to feel is the extra bit of weight. When you accelerate or brake, that extra weight is like a heavy backpack, if you want to think of it like that. So if you slam the brakes, you're going to get pushed into the handlebars, the bike is going to dive, the front tire is going to take a lot more load. Same as when you accelerate, the bike is going to dip backwards, so it's going to pull back, they're going to pull on you, and it's going to pull both you and your passenger backwards, which is going to upset the front tyre if you're going around the corner and accelerate too hard, so bear that in mind. So smooth inputs are going to be key here. One, for the comfort of your passenger, and two, just for your control. And the smoother you do things, the more you have time to think about emergency situations or just planning things out, like this car coming around the corner and me not wanting to really go over these things in the road. But if I'd slam the front brake then, we would have both wobbled forward and it would have been uncomfortable for me and her and that's not what we want. So I'd advise going out, stay local, go around small roads like this and get the feel for it because it is slightly different. It won't take too long to adjust. However, there is an adjustment period to riding with someone on the back. And especially if you are riding with someone that's going to be consistently riding with you, like I do, it's usually her on the back. You want to make sure that they're used to your riding style and you're used to how they're going to react. So let's say we've moved on a bit, we've got used to going around a few roads where we live. We've got the feel for having someone on the back. We know how it's going to feel when we go side to side a little bit. We know that the reaction time is obviously a lot slower because of the extra weight. Now it's time to upgrade a little bit and start moving to faster roads and a bit more traffic. And this is even more so where the smooth inputs come into play. Because when you're dancing around traffic, if you're going to be lane splitting or going around cars, people are unpredictable. And it's easy when someone pulls out for you to just lurch your bike ba bow really fast to the side to get around someone. But if someone's on the back not expecting it and they're leaning in the wrong direction, I've seen it before on videos, they might even fall off the side of the bike. So on the highway, on the motorway, what is it like? As I said at the beginning, in a straight line it's very stable. As always, it takes a bit more effort to turn. It's going to sit straight all day. And contrary to what most people will say, I would say, and I'm sure a lot of people would agree, 
riding on normal standard roads is a lot more difficult than riding on the motorway or highway and if you're enjoying this video and it is helping you guys out please like subscribe comment let me know what you think put any other tips you have that i might have missed because i'm doing this on the fly and i might not think of everything and that would be greatly appreciated so as always when you ride on the highway you're going to want to be ultra aware of your surroundings use your mirrors be aware of who's sitting next to you and whatnot i don't know what city you're in however out here in auckland the driving tends to be subpar and people will just pull out in front of you when there's not enough space for a car it happens so as always on the highway give yourself adequate amounts of space between you and the car in front if needs be move over to another lane give yourself that whole braking distance run and it might come in handy it's a smart thing to do and if you're going to sit behind a car try and sit to the side of the lane sit here or on the other side not slap bang in the middle that way you give them more chance to see you in their rear view mirror and if you do need to go around them in an emergency situation you can quite easily just zip over to the middle so that's a handy tip that might save your life and as i said earlier we've got an idiot here i can see him looking in the gap trying to squeeze through you get people like this it's the name of the game anyway i hope some of these tips helped you out i don't know how in depth this was let me know as i said before in the comments below and i'll see you guys in the next video thank you for watching as always always watch out for dickheads like this because make a choice buddy and why not wait i'll see you guys in the next video bye bye thanks for watching i am out of here